Hallelujah. Christ is risen.
Let us come before God with thanksgiving, with music and song. It is good to sing praise to you and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you make us glad by your deeds, O God. We sing for joy at the work of your hands. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence with joyful songs, with thanksgiving and praise. For God has taken away our garments of sadness and clothed us with joy, that we might sing praise and not be silent. We will sing God's love forever. Young and old will appear and rejoice. day proclaim the good news of God's salvation. Tell everyone about the amazing things God has done. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia!
reading from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus, Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. And the disciples returned to their homes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
continue our reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
chapter of First Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and the stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O oh God. As you breathe your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O oh God. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is you come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. Especially Jerry, Ruth, Amy, Gwen, Mike, Carol, Barb, Kathleen, Robin, John, and all those we name before you now aloud or silently. Hear us, O oh God. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, and all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any children to come up and join me for the children's message. Do you have any takers today? Or are we doing this all together today? All right, we'll do it all together. We'll do it all together. Young, how are you this morning? Good. Good. Awesome. So we're going to involve everybody today so that you're not just put on the spot, okay? Does that sound all right? Yeah, all right. So we heard a bunch of stories, a bunch of pieces of the story of Jesus' resurrection today, right? Yeah. yeah. We heard that Mary went to the tomb and the stone was rolled away. And then she went and got Peter and the other disciple, and they came back and looked in and saw that Jesus was gone, right? Yeah. Do you think they understood what was going on at that point? No, you don't think so? I don't think so, right? Yeah. And then, and then, so Mary stayed and kind of hung out, and she looked in the tomb and saw that Jesus wasn't there. And then she saw some angels, and then she saw somebody she thought was a gardener. Do you remember who that turned out to be? Uh, Jesus. Jesus, very good, right? And, but she didn't even know it was him until one thing that always, I'm glad that Marjorie read that reading because it always makes me cry because it would get so powerful. Because she knew it was Jesus when he called her by her name. Which I think is super powerful because we know that Jesus knows us by name too, right? Yeah. And then Jesus appeared. The disciples were all kind of scared because they weren't really sure what was going on. So they were in a locked room. And then Jesus was there with them. And they didn't, like, the door didn't open, but he was just there with them. And that is another part of the story that seems like we don't necessarily understand it, does it? I don't understand how all that works. That resurrection of Jesus is so kind of amazing 
and so hard to understand sometimes. Do you have questions about the Easter story? Nah. Nah. You got it? It's all, it's all, you totally understand it? Yeah. All right. How about any of you? Do any of you have questions about the Easter story or the pieces of it that don't always completely make sense to you? Yeah? Yeah, a couple, yeah? Like, I'm, I'm not quite sure, because we understand that Jesus was resurrected in a way that people could touch him, right? Thomas puts his hands in his side. Should we come sit? You seem a little, like, not quite sure what to do with yourself up here. So, we know that Jesus is, like, people can touch him, right? Because he invites Thomas to put his hands in his side. But yet, he showed up in a room without opening a locked door. Like, there are parts of what Jesus is like when he is resurrected that I have a hard time wrapping my head around. And we, I think that's true of a lot of the things that we trust about who God is. Do you have any questions about God? Or are you just like, no, I got this God thing now? No. No? No questions? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think sometimes those of us who get a little bit older and start asking a bunch of questions wish that we had that kind of childlike faith where we can just trust. But I think sometimes when we get older, we get, look at things and we're like, well, that doesn't really make sense. I'm not sure how that works. And we get, have some trouble with that. But I think the beauty of that is that we have a God who continues to love us and continues to show up for us, who continues to call us by name and give us ways that we can believe in Jesus just like he gave Thomas the ability to touch him. Jesus shows up for us in all kinds of ways to help us believe, even when we do have questions. So even if you might not have any right now, I bet that there are people out there that do have some questions. I know I sometimes have some questions. But the beautiful thing about that is that we have a God who shows up who will take our questions, who, who continues to help us believe even when we have questions. Will you pray with me? Okay. okay. All right. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the many ways that you come to us and bring us new life. As we continue to celebrate your resurrection in the midst of our celebrations and our questions and our doubts. Continue to come to us and help us to believe. In your name we pray. Amen. Do I help share with you? Yeah. yeah. All right. We stand up and invite everyone to join us if you are able. Are you ready? The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share time to peace.
invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, in this zeal you offer your very self, we give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Please stand as you are to vote. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. And all God's people say, Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one.